द प्रीवियस एपिसोड एपिसोड वन हेल्प विथ लाइव डेमो हाउ स्नो पार्क वर्क यूजिंग डेटा फ्रेम ए पी आई एंड हाउ इट मिमिक्ड अपाचे स्पार्क डेटा फ्रेम ए पी आई एज वेल एज पाइथन स्पांडर्स डेटा फ्रेम ए पी आई सो स्किल्ड डेटा इंजीनियर्स एंड डेटा प्रोफेशनल्स हैविंग प्रोग्रामिंग स्किल कैन ऑल्सो लेवरेज स्नो फ्लेक क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म यूजिंग स्नो पार्क इन दिस एपिसोड वी विल डिस्कस एंड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज नॉट स्नो पार्क और यू कैन से द लिमिटेशन ऑफ स्नो पार्क We understood that Snow Park is an API, and data developer can use Python or Java or Scala programming interface to build complex data pipelines. Snow Park's core abstraction is data frame, representing data with methods to operate on it, very similar to Python's Pandas library as well as Apache Spark's data frame API. This way, Snowflake is targeting Python and PySpark or Spark developer to make Snowflake more and more popular data platform. so let's decode what it is not so you as a data engineer or a data architect can make a right decision before you consider snowflake's snow park library for your data development welcome back to my channel data engineering simplified and to this everything about snow park playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you in episode 02 we will discuss what snow park cannot do or in other terms the limitation of snow park so you can take a right decision while building your data solutions especially when migrating your apache spark workload from hadoop platform to snowflake data platform in this playlist we are going to discuss many different topic related to snow park you can pause the video review the topic and jump to the specific episode if that interest you links for all the videos can be found in the description section or above in the info card the previous episode episode 1 already discuss what is snow park its computational architecture and its history again check the link in the description section or above in the info card before we move further i have a quick announcement i have published more than 100 videos covering different topics under different playlist and if you find it hard to get into a specific topic or a sub topic or a concept refer this summary card or a cheat sheet go to the description section and follow the download instructions for additional queries or specific question feel free to drop me a note in my instagram account so let's start Snowflake Snow Park in simple term is a translator library that translate your programming construct be it python java or scala into sql statement and run them in snowflake virtual warehouse using api calls it is not a framework like apache spark neither it is a direct substitute of apache spark but yes it can achieve the same goal like apache spark when it comes to data processing and data manipulation at scale Let's quickly discuss a typical Spark application which is sourcing or ingesting data from different source systems and then run computational workload. It could be your Hadoop based cluster or it could be a Databricks cluster where you are hosting your Spark runtime environment. In 80% of the cases, Spark applications source data from RDBMS system or in many legacy deployment it is done using Apache Scoop or some kind of integration tool. Other 20% cases could fall under different data sources like web api ftp location iot data or streaming data the data acquisition process writes data in different file formats like csv json parquet avro orc or xml once the data is landed to the raw or stage location data transformation jobs written in spark application is executed and perform transformation and computational activities now let's take the spark apache out from this picture and replace it with snow park and evaluate what are the limitations of snowflake snow park api and library using apache spark lens snow park reader api can read data only from internal stages external stages and tables within snowflake but it cannot read data from local storage ftp locations rdbms data sources and web apis what does it mean that this integration layer needs to be rearchitected whenever you are considering apache spark to snow park migration snowflake team may enhance snow park and may add this feature in future 
but as on version 1.3.0 it is not supported since snowpark api does not allow any connectivity via its reader api you have to either use standard python or java or scala jdbc odbc api approach to fetch data from external sources but that can only happen if you are running your program outside snowflake sandbox which means if you run your snowpark program inside snowflake sandbox it is not allowed as on snowpark version 1.3.0 snowflake sandbox or so called virtual warehouse does not allow any external connectivity over the internet to ensure the high security so there is no way that you can speed up your data ingestion by having distributed computing and if you are a data integration team think thoroughly when you are considering your apache spark to snowpark migration if you have a different file format other than file format listed above your snowpark application cannot handle that neither it has any provision to manage it as it does not allow any custom file format so let's say you have a multiple csv file zipped as a single unit or you have a sequence file these files cannot be read or processed using snowpark so you need to think your architecture before you can think of snowpark when such use cases comes on your way snowpark 1.3.0 read api option does not support infer schema option and you have to add schema before reading csv file or delimited file this is how it looks like again snowflake may add this feature in future releases for other file formats like parquet avro it already has schema attached with it so it's not an issue when you are considering snowpark for your data for reading the data from these files after data is loaded via reader api the next step in apache spark life cycle is to use data frame api and perform different data manipulations and transformation operations spark data frame api has around 100 plus functions and if you compare it with snowpark data frame majority of them are having similar structure and signature to minimize the migration effort from apache spark to snowpark however there are differences we have learned in our episode 1 the underlying implementation in snowpark is a way different from apache spark and we are not going to talk about underlying architectural differences in this episode so here is a list of data frame operations that either needs restructuring in its signature or not at all supported or it is named differently in snowpark all the data frame operations marked in yellow color in this list are not supported in snowpark version 1.3.0 and it is obvious for example df.coles is a function that perform a repartition in a spark cluster and snowflake sql does not have any equivalent operation and that's why this operation does not make any sense when it comes to snowflake snowpark data frame api on the other hand if you look at df.cache this function is renamed in snowpark and called df.cache result i have a dedicated playlist that talks about each snowpark data frame operation with examples refer the description section below for the link now let's talk about data frame action method and how it is being handled in apache spark versus snowpark when we reach an action call on a spark data frame all the transformation gets executed one by one this happens because a spark lazy evaluation which does not execute the transformation until an action is called in this example the collect function is an action before it gets executed apache spark as a framework does lot of thing under the hood it creates a logical plan followed by a physical plan followed by a cost optimization followed by code generation and then actual execution as per the configuration provided during the spark submit job happens there is no such thing in snowpark at least on the surface it is not visible and all the configuration what you have done using spark submit has no meaning when it comes to snowpark snowpark data frame api is also lazily evaluated when an action method is called an equivalent sql statement is generated based on the transformation applied on the data frame and this generated sql is eventually executed via a web api call to the snowflake cloud data platform so there is no job no stages no task no executor memory concept here and you can't even tune the way you can tune your spark job they are all taken care by snowflake the way snowflake takes care of standard sql queries you can't even tell snowpark how to construct your sql 
no control is given to the developer maybe this will change future however when you are considering your apache spark to snow park migration make sure that you are aware about this architecture which is being followed by snowflake the next point about spark web ui in spark we are able to observe how the data is distributed and executed which includes monitoring memory utilizations all of this can be easily viewed through spark's web ui snowpark on the other hand translate the data frame activities to equivalent sql as a result everything can be tracked through query history and query profile screen however unlike apache spark snowflake does not provide the same level of detail in its monitoring capabilities so level of logging and level of monitoring information available in apache spark that level of capabilities are not yet available in snowpark i am sure snowflake will bring those features in future but for now it is not available let's talk about mode of deployment when it comes to apache spark versus snowpark to execute a spark job you need to submit using spark submit command and you pass a lot of parameters and one of the parameter is that execution mode we don't have such parameter in comes to snowpark since snowpark is a library you can run it from any runtime environment be it local or any virtual machine and if you deploy your snowpark code to run inside the snowflake environment it will be deployed as an object like a stored procedure and will use snowflake sandbox inside a virtual warehouse and this sandbox environment will have a lot of restrictions with respect to file system access and network access so a snowpark program running in your local machine may or may not run in snowflake sandbox in a very similar fashion so this will be a big consideration while migrating your apache spark code to snowpark snowpark is a great technology and it is going to change the way we work with snowflake the intent of this chapter is not to discourage the use of snowpark but to bring awareness to the community and the team who are considering this technology as a replacement of apache spark i assume the limitations and the differences we discussed in this episode 2 between snowpark and apache spark are good enough snowpark is evolving very rapidly and some of the differences may not exist in near future but i assume this information has brought a different perspective about snowpark especially when you are considering snowpark as your next technology for your data development we can build a data solution in many ways we can use pure sql as a technology or we can use technology like dbt or we can use snowpark or a combination of many of them if you are a part of a data development team or an architect or a data manager you will have this question who should learn snowpark in your team is it everybody or a data engineer who has programming skill so next chapter will answer that question snowpark brings a lot of opportunity for data professionals and once you know its application you will feel more empowered so don't forget to watch the next chapter thank you for watching episode 2 if you have learned something valuable from this episode don't forget to press the like button and share this playlist with other data engineers and snowflake developers happy learning and keep growing